be in peace to you all from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You do know that first garden story, right? About Eden, when Adam was told, eat from any tree except the one and take care of the rest. And of course, Adam waits to see what will happen. God told him, if you eat the fruit, that's the end of the story. Now later, when it was Eve and the snake talking about the fruit on the tree, Adam didn't interject much until he let the guinea pigs go first. And then he took the fruit and he ate it. And God comes down and says, what's happening here? You're not living by the rules of the garden. And Adam and Eve are hiding and they're ashamed of themselves because God can see them for what they are and they can see each other. And God knows, as well as we do, that the punishment was supposed to be a very short Bible, a book that was over at the end of chapter 2. But instead, God found a way for life to continue. When Adam and Eve were there in the garden where every hippie was walking around in love, eating fruit and berries off the trees, and there was no such thing as death, God, the Lord God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, took the life from something else so that Adam and Eve could be dressed not in fig leaves but in animal skins and go out from the garden and fill the world and continue to live. The very first story of humanity in Scripture is the story of God coming to the garden and finding the gardeners hiding in their shame, a shame that is supposed to bring death, and yet the Lord takes another life to clothe them away from their shame and put them on feet to live. If that's how Scripture begins, then can we imagine how it ends? Jesus walks up to the pastors and the priests, the archpriests and the elders of the temple. These are the people who are in charge of being ministers of God's word to the world. These are the leaders of the priestly chosen nation of Israel that is supposed to shine like light for the rest of the world to live. And Jesus confronts them with the same story that began in Eden. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. And there were tenants who were supposed to care for it. And when the landowner asked for the faithful payment of that life, the tenants rebelled. They refused to give back the fruit of the life that they were charged to offer. And so prophets were sent, but they were disregarded and turned away. More prophets arrived, David and his psalms, kings who would lead the people, judges who would speak for freedom. They were spat on, they were bound, they were kicked out and killed stoned before our eyes. Jesus looks those leaders of the temple eye to eye, and he tells them the landowner was even willing to send his son, thinking maybe you would respect the son, the one who comes in the name of our Father. But even here, the world stood up to reject. In good human fashion, they figured out that if the heir to the throne came into their presence and the heir was removed, who would become the new heir of all power? If we just knock God off the top of the pyramid, we will be the great ones of the universe, right? We'll inherit the top spot. Jesus looks at these 
archpriests and these elders, and he begs them from the wisdom they are supposed to be offering the people around them, from the sacrifices they're supposed to be raising, from the prayers that they're supposed to utter, from the history and the scripture they're supposed to guard. What do you think is going to happen when the owner of the garden comes back? What do you think is going to happen when the Lord Almighty comes on the evening breeze to walk with you next? I should be gracious with the priests and the pastors and the elders of that temple. It would do me well to be merciful because what would I say if Jesus asked me the response of the father whose son had been bound, carried out of the walls and killed? I would answer the way the world answers. I would answer an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I would answer that that landowner should show up and be just as damning and destructive as we are with each other. If someone hurts one of mine, what would I not go through to defend and protect and repay? The chief priests tell Jesus that when that young man's father returns, he will utterly destroy those wicked ones. He will give them a miserable death. He will meet them and greet them the way we take each other down in anger. And we are so capable of anger. We're so tense right now as a nation and as a world that the leaders of countries egg each other on where lives are at stake, where citizens turn against each other for no reason, climbing the floors of hotels to rain down assault on strangers. We live in a world where we greet each other not even able to handle one disaster by the time the next hurricane hits our shores right now. What should we expect from the landowner? Wouldn't that landowner in the parable be just like us? Wouldn't he come back where he had been hurt and harmed with all the anger and the vengeance that we carry in our own lives, wouldn't he be just another chain in the broken cycle that we're living in? And Jesus shakes his head. Haven't you read that the cornerstone was rejected, had to build a new world? Haven't you read that the stone that could be used to stone your your, your neighbor in retribution, that stone that was rejected is needed to be the cornerstone of a new creation, that the Lord is doing it, that it's marvelous in your eyes? Don't you know that the fragile way of destruction that keeps being leashed out on us is not going to stand up to what the Lord is accomplishing? Our fragile pain, our fragile attempt to keep going, it's going to be crushed by what is new. Jesus, the only Son of our Father, is looking at the chief priests and the elders who in two days' time are going to have him bound, tied, driven outside the walls of the garden, I mean Jerusalem, taken to a hill and killed. Jesus is looking at the people who are going to put him in his grave. And he asks them, what will the Father do when he comes to those tenants? They can't see mercy for the trees. 
They only see the angry way of the world. But Jesus knows that when the Father returns, when we see the Father in Jerusalem following the death of the Son, it is not in fire being rained down on the temple, but on new life coming out of the tomb. When the Father returns, He doesn't go to exact vengeance on the garden. He goes to the garden and rolls back the stone and calls in, boy, it is time to get up and go back to them because the work I gave you still needs to be done. They think we're here for retribution when the task at hand needs to be mercy if we are ever going to stop this cycle of death. So that old story will be taken out of their hands. And at some way, in some fashion, the Father will put life back in the Son to come and hand them what is needed to be the ministers of mercy, to be bearers of the gospel of truth for this world to finally stand up and live. Amen.